Oh, the opening! Love it already. Love it already. Super stylish. Just what I expected. There's the life in weird sort of 1970s cartoon form. <laughs> this is interesting. I feel like this is an older style I haven't seen in a long time. It's kind of nostalgic in its way. This feels like an homage to something I'm a little bit too young to understand. <laughs> Very curious about the wife. I guess this is the episode where we get her, right? We, we get ourselves a wife. This could be good. This could be really good. There she is. <laughs> Spoiler for appearance, but that's okay. Watch them become a better family than most families. Not that that would be all that difficult. They all got their unique identities, but through family, they will learn how to love each other and also how to love themselves. <laughs> Calling it now. It's like Fruits Basket, Spy, Spy Edition. Spy Family, also known as Spy X Family. Why? Why? Oh, because it's Frankie. <laughs> That's a pretty good reason. It's a man. It's weird how these shows sort of convalesce. I just watched the episode of Demon Slayer where they all had their makeup done badly and posed as women, somehow. Well, that hairstyle is not it, though. At least he got a peanut in the bargain. I'm just sort of leading the way in this mission here. Secure a wife, yes, mission two. This is exciting. Looks like me and my boy Twilight are on a similar mission, and maybe a similar amount of hilarity will ensue. <laughs> hilarity and sadness. Where are we right now? This is the wife. Who is she? She is somewhat off. Is she also a spy? Uh -huh. She's a spy. <laughs> I'm suddenly extra suspicious. I'm on high alert. In other words, if you don't get married, you're going to get arrested as a spy. Oh, so you just had to say that right with an earshot. Wonderful co-workers and great people. I don't think that Yor is actually a spy, but it feels like there's something about her background that has limited her exposure to the real world, and so she's sort of playing a game in her own way, right? Like, playing normal? Is that the right read? I mean, and also... And this is sort of weird to say, because it's anime, but she's cute. Boy, she's getting it from all angles. Yeah. It's like she needs a cover of her own just to get everyone off her back. Which is obviously the best reason to have a husband. Such a bizarre backstory motivation. Oh no. The creepy shopkeeper. Thorn Princess. Oh boy. Here's the spy side. Is she a. Is she an assassin? Well, I was saying she's insulated from the real world. <laughs> oh, is this the right mother figure for Anya? <laughs> they really lured me in with that one. Does she not make money from this? I mean, I sort of get why she can't have a partner. Yeah, she needs someone who can fit into this lifestyle. Wonder who that could be. Cleaning, right, yeah. It's a different kind of cleaning than I do. Very general criteria. Also make sure she's hot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I feel like the single father thing could, could be a, a thing. It could be a look. It helps that Anya's adorable. <laughs> Selling people out. It's really hot right now. Hot in the streets. Maybe this is what leads them to intersect. How dare you? Anya is the, the cutest princess. <laughs> oh no, she has trauma. Oh no, that answer. <gasps> as long as you're good, I won't sell you. Things you can say to make your child feel secure. I like how I just memorized all the women in the city. Is that one of his skills? Photographic memory? And there she is, at the seamstress for the dress. So he's gonna fall in love with her too. <laughs> That's a great memory. His instincts are correct. He literally had his back turned, speaking of instincts. Nice save. <laughs> They're perfect for each other. It's your future mother. I don't think you need to really fear for your life. 
Oh, right, I'm just a psychic. <laughs> oh, I just figured it out. Assassins, cool. Waku waku, indeed. It's all on you, Anya. <laughs> she can just see the whole, the whole script. A oh, classic technique that I have no mother song. Well played, Anya. Why don't we take it a little, a little further? One step further. If it's not too much trouble, maybe you can accompany me in this marriage. <laughs> well, she fell for it. That's a good look. See, so they both got their secrets. They both think they're misleading the other. Or they both think they have a bigger thing to hide. And they're both content in that lie. Which means you couldn't imagine a better match. <laughs> that's typically gold in a relationship. Not the lying part. I mean, when each party thinks they got the better deal, that's real magic. One thing I've learned, though, from experience is that it's really easy to fall victim to your own arrogance. Like, most of the times where I've told myself I'm in emotional control of a situation, or when I've intentionally kept distance from people to sort of protect myself, or avoid the fear of sort of getting in too deep, it typically backfires and I end up falling in deep. And it's probably not an accident. You know, I think what might be going on is the only reason that instant comes up is because I recognize there's going to be glue there. You know, there's something there that I can't ignore. And it's scary, or it was scary, at one point to sort of imagine giving up autonomy or taking responsibility. And so it's sort of a selfish protective mechanism, but there is something there, right? And so you spend enough time with someone who you obviously value on some level or recognize on some level, things just have a way of running their course. Although now I find that I actually want that. Like, I think I've been through that cycle enough times where I, I really value having someone I can commit to. But there's sort of a weird game, I think a lot of people play and maybe it's a transitionary phase as you get to learn about people and yourself in relationships where you're not really fully valuing them as human beings it's not really about giving to them it's about what fits conveniently into your own concept of who you are and what your life is but of course some of the best things that come along are going to be things that directly conflict with that in the sense that those are the things that force you to grow so that's clearly i think going to be the case for twilight and your this is going to start off as a relationship of convenience but is going to grow into a lot more than that get them super oishi peanuts it was code. We had meow before, now we got ribbit. That conflicts with my existing mission. Frankie <laughs> deserves a promotion. This guy is hardworking. He got his attention. And he also is an inventor. This guy. Frankie can do it all, except get dates, apparently. When your boss asks you to work late, but you got a hot date. <laughs> it's not for me. Oh, speaking of accidents. Stood up. He'll show up. Just in strange fashion. Yeah, they're all going to be put in their place when Lloyd walks in in all his gorgeous glory. What a plot. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, this is Dominic, the brother's friend. Oh, it's this girl's boyfriend? This girl's the worst. Camilla. We hate Camilla. She hates us because she's threatened by us. A little bit quick to the killing idea. That's alright. I feel like it's gotta be lonely. I feel like there's certain kinds of loneliness you only recognize in hindsight, you know what I mean? Sometimes you don't even know how lonely you are until you're not lonely anymore. Oh my god, she keeps going. And then, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's got blood all over him. We went to husband right away. I think you're a little concussed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a doctor in this scenario. Well, this would have accidentally worked in our favor. We just skipped a bunch of steps. <laughs> I knew it. I feel like poor Dominic is gonna pay for this later. <laughs> oh, she's attacking him with Gratton! <laughs> this lady is just exposing herself all over the place. Poor Dominic. Doesn't really matter. So what if she gave massages? 
幼い弟を養うために必死で頑張ってきました自分を犠牲にしてまでも誰かのために何かのために過酷な仕事に耐え続けることは波の覚悟では務まりません。This is, of course, exactly right. Even if she didn't get massages, that's what it was. Damn, Camilla, you just got owned and you had it coming. It just makes me sad because Camilla's gonna take this out on Dominic later. You know she is. She may even go as so far as to throw Grattan in his face. That was a perfect speech on multiple levels. Like, it's Lloyd being quick witted and providing the image or illusion of a stable marriage and deep understanding between the two of them. But it's so much more. Like, it's also him, right? It's his life. It's also sympathy for her and real understanding of her in a way that she's probably not used to being seen. It's him retaliating on her behalf in this horrible episode. It's a showing of solidarity for this girl he's known for five minutes. It's a sign of courage walking into someone else's house with blood all over him, putting Camilla Deville in her place. It's traits of a great boyfriend. One thing I've had to learn <laughs> through trial and error and it's sad because it's so painfully obvious in hindsight but for some reason i struggled with it is just always defaulting to taking your partner's side i think it's tough for me just because of the way i'm oriented you know i'm a very like thoughts oriented person in general my first approach to a lot of things is like an abstract concept and i'm inclined to sort of play devil's advocate and to do what people misconstrue as arguing i'm like not arguing i'm just genuinely interested in things and so that comes off as debate which comes off as opposition and i've had to learn that for people who are not oriented in the same way i am that comes across as me not having their back. And if I'm assessing what's valuable to me, it's 100% more valuable to me that people I love know I have their back, you know, than it is to investigate an idea. At least in that moment, you know, I think there's a time for that later. I don't think like blind deference to every thing your partner does and sort of agreeing with everything just by default is the answer. I just think that there's a priority of things. It's like first is the love, you know, first is the, I am someone who is there for you and will put you first. And I'm okay being uncomfortable for that. You know, I'm okay making a fool out of myself, perhaps. I'm okay rocking the boat if it means having your side against someone like Camilla, you know? I haven't quite thought it through, but I think there's something to the idea of displaying a unified front always to others. And then perhaps having more honest communication privately when there are lower stakes and when it's sort of a more intimate moment between us as a duo, if that makes sense. <laughs> Let's like, for real, get married. Oh, it's still going. This is all happening in the <laughs> during the credits. Interesting. I feel like there's something else going on here. Frankie's not a spy, is he? Yeah, it's gonna be a lot easier for both of them if this all comes out into the open. I can't tell how much he's actually playing along and how much is her being naive. Yes, in case that wasn't clear. That's what I'm saying! And there it is. She's very talented with her feet. Drop the axe. Drop the axe. Now who's naive? Is he gonna buy it? Are we buying this? These after credit scenes in this, this show is, are something else. <laughs> I think we should get married for real. Yeah, we're like perfect for each other, obviously. Dead. <laughs> but they both clearly like each other already. There's a lot of chemistry here. A lot of possible chemistry. Isn't it like midnight? Oh no, the ring! If he ends up getting the ring in this conflict, yes! <laughs> Damn, it's a true spy. Oh, he's gonna give her a grenade ring? The most romantic thing I've ever seen in my life. A wedding and a funeral. <laughs> a wedding for these two and a funeral for all these lackeys. That was fun. This is one of them fun shows, huh? I knew this was going to be a get yourself a wife episode, but this was done better than I expected. I'm sure Maze Hughes is out there smiling down on us somewhere. In a similar way, and perhaps a better way than the first episode, there are multiple good things happening at once that make their bond sort of magnetic. There's the fact that the circumstances of their lives match perfectly, but also it's clear there's so much going on or so much potential that could happen that they themselves are not aware of yet. It's sort of their blind spots. You know, they have these concepts about what they're their lives are. They're sort of turning a blind eye to their own humanity, and they are going into this thinking they are fully conscious, calculating agents, but they're actually being pulled along by something much deeper, something they haven't been able to fully grasp, as is often the case with life. I mean, I feel like that's what happens in a lot of magnetic relationships. It's like you have a certain concept of what your life is and where you're going, and then certain people come along and you don't even know you needed them until you're in that situation, and then you don't understand how you could have lived without them. And it's not an accident, you know, it's precisely the fact that you had that blind spot that made them so magnetic. You know, people that come into our lives that affect big change. I don't want to use the cliche of saying they're there for a reason because that implies some sort of weird like cosmic fate kind of thing, but it's definitely not an accident that we get attracted to the people we get attracted to. And I think a big part of that is things in our life we haven't worked out that would benefit us to work out end up being things that stick out and get snagged by life as various things come our way. The things you most need have a way of finding you if you're lucky and if you're cognizant enough to put yourself out into a situation where life happens, you know, you're not like 
you're not sort of shielding yourself from the world. I was sort of blindsided by my relationship over the past year. It's drastically altered my life and I think very crucially my sense of self and who I am and what I want. And at the time, a lot of it seemed accidental, but looking back on it, it would have been really amazing if it hadn't happened. Just the way I was conducting myself and the way I was composed emotionally and the stories I were telling myself that were lies and sort of ignoring certain fundamental areas of my life. I set myself up in such a way that there was a gap through the course of going back out into the world and going back to a normal life. There ended up being this gravitational force or whirlwind or whatever that picked me up and launched me and didn't put me down for a while. Back to the episode, of course it helps that they're both really talented and stunningly beautiful and just the right amount of lonely, even if the two of them don't fully recognize that. That's another thing that can form real glue. Finding someone who gets you in ways you've given up on other people getting you. And if the two of them have that for each other, it's a wrap. Although, of course, it'll take a lot of navigating before they can realize that the two of them can be that for each other. Although, I feel like the assassin thing is a lot is a lot to take in. There might be some weirdness there. Although, I guess Lloyd has a lot of blood on his hands, too. Speaking of glue, another thing that works out great is when people compliment each other and when the partner ends up being strong in an area in which the individual feels deficient. You know, this girl was sort of drowning in the brutal land of coworker politics and Camilla judgment, and as talented as she is, that's not a battle she can fight, whereas Lloyd can, and Lloyd can easily fight Camilla. Camilla's nothing. He can defeat Camilla effortlessly because there's no insecurity for him wrapped up in it, where there is for your, which is her idea identity in society and her peers and how she's judged as a woman. And so he gets to be a gentleman for her in that way, which is really cool. And also just in general, I feel like is a great quality and is somewhat rare. You know, I actually had an experience that made me kind of sad a couple of months ago where I was on a flight with my girlfriend and her in-flight TV screen wasn't working. She can't speak English at all. So like I went to try to resolve it, like to get it turned on. And I ended up spending a lot of time communicating with the staff, trying to get it working, turning it on again, turning it off again, whatever. And at one point, one of the flight attendants said to me, is this a new relationship? And I said, well, we've been dating for about four or five months. And she said, oh, that's why. It's because it's a new relationship that you're trying so hard. And I was taken aback by that comment because I'm like, why should it matter that it's a new relationship for me to go to bat for my girlfriend? And it might have been because that was that flight attendant's experience. I mean, it was a weird comment to begin with, but like without meaning to, she kind of revealed her own sadness. And it was a weird moment, but it, I guess, was also a good one for me because it sort of strengthened my resolve that that's sort of what I want to be or sort of the dynamic I want to have. And not just romantically either. Like, I want to be reliable. You know, I want people to know that I care about. Them. I want people to know that I value them and want the best for them. And want to help them because I do you know it's just not always obvious what the best path is and the more I think about it the more I experience the more I realize that action is a really great way and it's really important to sort of keep priority in mind and to keep other people's love languages in mind and how they interpret things and how that might differ from the way I interpret things and to sort of put my chosen priorities higher than my fears and my instinctual priorities if that makes sense so yeah another really <laughs> Fun episode of Spy X Family. I feel like there's so much potential in the show. I can only imagine where it's going to go from here.